Ladies and gentlemen, saxophonist Howard Riley. How you doing, brother? Man, everything is all good. I can't complain. It don't hook it up. <laughs> I hear you there. I hear you there. We got to go down memory lane. Like I said, I got a really good chance to read your bio, and it's just like, woo, very, very impressive. Won't you give us a little synopsis of how it began for you? Uh, began at piano lessons from my grandmother, Saturday mornings when I was a little kid. Music I heard growing up in church. My grandfather was a saxophonist, tenor saxophonist, had a short stint with Count Basie. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing and I uh, took to it real well. So, but, you uh, know, I, I love the music and I love the, the, the culture and the history behind it outside of just a, a personal thing. And, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dealing with the horn and dealing with the music is a, a, a passion, a love, and like, you know, something that stimulates me intellectually and spiritually. Now, you said, when you st actually, when you started playing the saxophone, you said, this was meant for me. Talk about that. I, I don't know if it was, it came like that, like, you know, well, once I started, I was like, yeah. it, it, this, oh, man, first couple notes, this is for me. I remember when something clicked, and mm -hmm. I really, really started liking playing in the music. It was when I, when I got introduced to uh, Miles Davis and Charlie Parker. Mm-hmm. And it was just something about that, that music, the way it sounded, how it was to play it. I went from just listening to the radio, like all my friends, to nothing but, you know, Miles mm -hmm. and Bird and, and Duke and Train and them. What is it about this music? We're going to talk a little bit more about, but what is it about this music you love so much? It's, it's one of the greatest representations of humanity and democracy. You 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 have the the ability to express joy, pain, while evoking a spiritual thing that makes you want to move your body, and in the process that you're taking doing it, is you're thinking and operating on such a high level. It's I, I love all aspects of that. It's, you know, it's, it's all like, you know, good cultural representation, just like good food, you know, good temperature, good texture, good smells, <laughs> you know, got that good aftertaste. That, right, you know, right, right. All right. All right. You know that. <laughs> kind of want to start. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know. mm -hmm. at, the age, at the age of 14, 15, first, let's talk about how did you get that, that record deal or you know, record a CD at the age of 14. Obviously, they saw you a fantastic musician, fantastic saxophone player. 14, 15 years old, though. Um, I've never had a record deal, so... <laughs> uh, I've been putting out my music since I was that age. I saved up. I, I was working, uh, gigging. Mm -hmm. And I just saved my money and... Talk to some people who helped me out. This guy, Steve Savage at the Blue Bear School of American Music, helped me out. A guy named Jim Nadell at the Stanford Jazz Workshop helped me out. A guy who I still know to this day, then worked at Naris, is now my manager, Bob Broadhead, helped me out. You know, so uh, I rallied, my community rallied behind me and helped me. Okay, the bigger question is, what made you, in your mind, or whatever, said, you know what, I want to record some music? That's what that's what we all want to do, aspiring young musicians. I just took to the to the music really quickly okay. and fast. And I mm -hmm. just was like, man, I, I'm looking at, you know, the magazines at the time, when magazines mm -hmm. were actually popular and read, looking at Downbeat and Jazz Times and seeing Roy Hargrove and Kenny Garrett and all the people I like buying their CDs and to be able to be a part of that is, is something we all aspire to do, to have, have our work, you know, of mm -hmm. such value to document. So I was like, I, I want to do this. I'm just really amazed at such an early age to be so focused on, you know, on anything to take it to the long terms that you have done. 
Oh, right on, right on, my folks. There's, there's a lot of people in the community who I, I looked up to that was doing it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I was looking up to Keto Gamble, who's one of the most ridiculous piano players, fetching the piano, doing it, being playing with Billy Higgins as a teenager, playing with her mom, Faye Carroll, as a teenager. I was looking to people, my fellow friends, my friends, colleagues, looking Casey Benjamin in New York. Mm-hmm. Who was who was touring and got his first record deal when he was fifteen, wow. and producing, and you know, looking at Mark Shem, you know, who was playing with Betty Carter when he was seventeen. So there's there's so many, you know, Black Vegan Jesus dropped talent off with so many places, and it's just nice to have a community who, from which I can gather inspiration from. Mm-hmm. Just look at my brothers and my sisters doing it to inspire me to do so and we have such a long legacy of amazing musicians you know, I mean, whether it's dexter gordon right. not being good and getting good at 17 with with lewis armstrong now he played with lewis after he played with lionel hampton first you know stuff like that seeing knowing these stories you know it's interesting now that you you know you, you brought up so many cats that started at such an early age. You're right, because Tony Williams started young. Herbie Hancock was still a teenager, I think, when he started playing with Miles. And uh, so um, I guess I, I need to correct myself, because when you brought that up, I said, oh, yeah, there's a lot of cats that started young. So my bag on that one there. I ain't know your bag, man. <laughs> You know. Coltrane wasn't Coltrane when he was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right, 22. Right. It's a, you know. Yeah, it's a process. It was Cannonball. Right, you know. right, 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 right. <laughs> My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind. And we're visiting with saxophonist Howard Riley. You've had the opportunity to play with some fantastic musicians. And is this all by, like, from what I've heard in the past, and quite word of mouth and actually seeing you play? He says, oh. I want to check him out. Oh, yeah. Right on. Right on. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. You know, when you're cooking and, and, and somebody smell the food, they're like, ooh, um, what is that? I want I want to have a taste. So when, when I'm playing these notes, I definitely want you to be intrigued and then come and check out what's going on because it's guaranteed you're going to like it. But you are an advocate of putting a few genres of music together in your presentation to be able to how you speak about the music. Am I correct, wrong, or? I, I am definitely a product of the Bay Area. This mm-hmm. is uh, one of the creative meccas. Uh, when Herbie Hancock wanted a new band, he came to the Bay Area. When, when um, Betty Davis, was looking for her sound. She came and recorded in the Bay Area. It was a it's a hotbed of creativity. And I'm fortunate enough to have studied with had mentors like Bill Stewart from Chicago, like Jules Broussard from Louisiana, and get in a plane and hang out with people like Alan Smith. You know, so I I being with these guys and John Turk and Faye Carroll, you understand that <clears throat> it's one music is music from one people. Mm-hmm. Everybody was from the hood. The, ter- the sounds of the church were everywhere, inescapable, regardless of your profession or religion. You heard those sounds. Mm-hmm. And it was a thing. It was a thing. You know, we think about our favorite Motown record, our favorite Temptations. It's around the same time Coltrane was recording The Love Supreme. So, you know, it's, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> out here, it's, you, you kind of have to have a, a grip on all the genres. So not, I don't even like to say genres like that. Just, just understand our music and how to communicate with the, with the people. And it's a certain type of musics, certain mm-hmm. time frames that do that. During your during your time learning, really starting to learn your instrument, was there a time that you said, I think I'm getting it? 
I think I'm understanding this. Then taking your own spin to put it in this bowl and mix it up. And as you said, for you to be able to, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> certain periods I, I feel I hear stuff better. Like I'm able to hear or understand a little better what Earl Garner was doing or hear and understand what Maj Ball was doing a little better and understand what Barry Harris is talking about, you know, talking about Bud Powell and Charlie Parker. So I have these phases and not necessarily that I put my own spin on it. Um, <clears throat> it just inspires me to stay on the journey and to learn more. And then the more I stay on the journey and learn more, the more I hear, the more I understand and the more, excuse me, the more I hear and understand, the more I can be myself within the structure. The more you understand the structure, the more you're able to do within the structure. And it's a grand structure. The mm -hmm. blues and the swing is, is the grandest structure <laughs> ever created. So <clears throat> not necessarily put my own spin on it, but I understand it better. So when I'm telling the story, I can have depth and understanding when I'm talking to the people. Mm -hmm not necessarily come up with a new way of playing saxophone but just have you know knowledge base understanding and and that that thing you, you know what i'm saying i call it that intangible something that that, that right. thing that big mama put in the collard greens and sweet potato pie you know you know the thing that big mama put in there that your mama didn't put in there it's, it's <laughs> that it's that <clears throat> it's that thing mm -hmm. it's that intangible something and try and put that that that, that special thing that that sauce <laughs> what motivates you? The elders, the music, mm -hmm. seeing how far we've come in such a short, short amount of time, seeing the, the, the never ending quest for the better oneself and to, to enjoy the blessing of playing music. I was just listening to this Zoom with Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins is 92 and was talking about the love of the music and how you have to love the music and people are like what is what, like what is your practice regimen what are you doing he's like man I, I'm, I love to play the horn I'm playing the horn I'm I'm you know what you need to do and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on this music and, and just being able to have that that thing that yeah. that, that, that thing to want to play that thing to be a part of this this great music that, that's that's the most inspiring thing because right. when I put on some Wester Young, I'm like, oh man, okay, I got to pick my horn up. <laughs> I hear some hear some Ben Webster. I'm like, oh man, oh wow, okay, this oh this, you know, when you shake your head, I went and heard Billy Harper with the Cookers. Oh my God, mm -hmm. you know, and so that type of stuff. And you see the cats when you when you see Dr. Eddie Henderson, and Billy Harper, and George Cables, and Billy Hart, and and and, and Tootie Heath and Benny Golson and Sonny Rollins and Wayne and Herbie and, and Bunky Green, you know what I'm saying? And Gary mm -hmm. Bartz, you're like, oh man, and Harold Jones. There's is, is, is so many of these legends and, and you hear them play and you hear their ability to pontificate upon the, the diaspora. It's like, oh my God, and it's so soulful. It got so much groove, <laughs> it got so much flavor on it. It's so, it's so the depth is, unmeasurable so that that's what be inspiring me yeah i um uh, i was a late bloomer in jazz um you know uh we won't go into that story but i was just a late bloomer but then when i started listening to it and this is one reason what brought up night journey rewind i started listening to this music living in los angeles my first encounter of somebody that was really knowing the jazz thing his name was roy porter who uh, they call him the Brown Bomber back in the 40s in Central Avenue, playing with Diz, Howard McGee. Then mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to meet Billy Higgins. Billy, that was my man. Billy was my man. <laughs> Let me give you a quick story. So I really <laughs> got this jazz thing going at this college station, and they have this little place called the Bird's Nest. And so I told Billy, I said, man, you know what? They've got this place called the Bird's Nest, and I would really like to do a live show out of there, you know, on the radio. At that time, you had to order a, a broadcast cable. But here's what Billy said. Billy said, that sounds pretty good. 
uh, how much is that going to cost? And I said, well, to get the line is $300. Billy went in his pocket. <laughs> Let's do it. That's where Billy was mm-hmm. at, man. I mean, I just like, I and I was just throwing it out there. I did not know he really wanted to do it. And so, you know, that was just one. That's what made me so connected with Billy Higgins. That then being able to talk to cats like Harold Land, meet Harold Land, um, so many other cats in the L.A. area. That's one reason why I started Night Journey Rewind, because I was a late bloomer on jazz. But we had all these legends in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. I had to format a radio station that I can bring them up and talk about it. So, I mean, it, it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's a beautiful thing. And a brutal, thing. And, and a wonderful, I grew, I need to learn how to talk. And a wonderful, like, when, when, when that spirit hits you, when mm-hmm. that thing, when that bug bites you. Yeah. Especially because I really got under, and one of this, and then we'll go on. I just have to say this, from Red Callender to Al McKibbins mm-hmm. to Donald mm-hmm. Bird to Mm -hmm. Carl Burnett, to Mm -hmm. Horace Silver, Donald Byrd, all these cats, man. And I was, like I said, I was really naive on this music. They sat down and talked to me. They did not Mm -hmm. make me at one time, bro, feel like I was stupid or illiterate because I didn't know anything about jazz. That was priceless for me and brought me to where I'm at now. Oh man, that's so those cats are soulful. That's gonna tell you the stuff. Mm-hmm. That that's that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's a part of the thing that's missing a lot these days, and like with jazz education and just the overall scene, mm-hmm. just wanting to for the entire community to be informed, right. not trying to hoard information or because you know something you're better than that person. It's like no. You hear stories about Harold Mayburn going up to anybody who was playing something he thought was cool. He'd be like, hey, man, can you show me that? It'd be a student. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, what? you just play something really cool. Can you show me that? Mm-hmm. Or like, no, hey, man, this is how it goes. Put your hand on top of my hand. This is the shape. Like, Yeah, that's really missing now. That is really mm-hmm. missing. Because once again, with the cats that I named off, they said they did these young cats would come in. They let them come up on the stage. Now, if they blew it, they get them off the stage, but they sat there and talked to them after the set. Mm-hmm. Look, you need to do A, B, C practices. Mm-hmm. Come back in a month or two. Let's see how you do then. And you're right. That's not happening now at all. You know, that is not happening. No. Word, no, we, we, we need that. No, go ahead. No, I was just co-signing. We need that. Right. What, um... <laughs> Where do you see this great African-American classical art form going on in the future? Because we're still having problems with mainstream, really, they, they love playing it, but then when it comes to paying or getting righteous, then that's where all the little craziness comes in to play. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, because we're, we're in the midst of a cultural dark age. Mm-hmm. So... There is future. I mean, there is brightness in the future when you hear, you know, Lil Kojo Roni, when you hear Makai Boone, you hear these young cats coming up, really loving the music, really, really playing at a high level. It's, it's hope when you see, like, you know, people my age really trying to continue and play. That's mm-hmm. cool. That's very hopeful. But the future of the music, I don't know. I'm staying optimistic because I love it so much and I know the people I introduce to the music and share my love of, with, of the music with them. They love it as well. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, I have to we, say... We're in a very weird times right now. So the pendulum must things. swing back. Right. So when will it swing back? I'm not sure. Well, I will say this... Since I've been doing the shows up in the Bay Area, and I've got a lot of a hold to a lot of local cats, uh, drummer Jeff Mars, um, and some other, and to me, to a degree, that's pretty inspiring because these cats are not joking. They, I mean, they're playing their butts off. Well, yeah. yeah, definitely. So, um, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, and so, some other, you know, James Mahone's still around in the area, able to have him. Mm-hmm. See, I remember James when he was with uh, 
uh, Black Note up in Los Angeles playing at the Merck Park all the time. I used to hang out there mm -hmm. at Fifth Street Dicks. Oh my God, yep. I wish that would ever come back. Oh, that was one of the... Richard had that place hopping, man. Richard had that place hopping. Fifth Street Dicks. Okay. I went down memory. Let's get back to <laughs> focus. But I mean... Oh, no, but, man. That, those spots were beautiful. Right. And see, that's where, even though I was really learning and really getting to, when I started hanging out there, that's where I just really started saying, okay, now I really see where this music is going, where this music, why they love this music, why even with all the BS that's around them, they're going to stay true to this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, man, um, let's talk briefly. We're going to have to have another conversation, but let's talk briefly. <laughs> You're coming to the Peacock Lounge on the 23rd yes, of sir. this month. What do yep. we expect to hear from Howard Wiley? Man, you expect to hear a, a very joyous person. Mm -hmm. um, the 23rd is my birthday. All right. And All right. I typically, and this is weird to say, I don't really play a lot of straight ahead jazz in California. Um, so get an opportunity to stretch out and swing out. It's, it's just going to be fun. It's really going to be a great like like an old jazz show, man. You know what I'm talking about when you go see Cedar Walton play. Oh, oh it's yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go see McCoy Tyner play, Bobby Hutchinson play. It was fun. Right. It's, you go see a jazz show now, it'd be a headache. It'd be like a like somebody is <laughs> talking calculus. And I understand what they're saying. I understand the calculus. But I'm like, dude, I'm here on a date. Don't nobody want to do a whole bunch of counting. So you will not encounter all that. You're going to encounter us playing some Duke Ellington, some John Coltrane, some Benny Golson. We're going through actual jazz. Okay. You know, we're okay. going to be swinging. All you know, right. I got Marcus Shelby on the bass. Talk about oh. L.A. Talk about Black Note. Yep, yep. You that's know. my boy. Yeah, yeah. And who else? Got Mr. Matt Clark on piano. Okay. Matt Clark was killer. Uh-huh. Yes. Mr. Jameo Brown, Transcendence Project, on drums. Wow, wow. Yep. Hmm. Matt Clark, Marcus Shelby, know them both well. And uh, looking forward to your uh, your drummer. Um, oh, yeah, Jameo's ridiculous. Oh, that's good. Man, I've been really blessed, and I'm so happy that the cats that I'm getting, including you coming in, and just to let you know, I just talked to Calvin Keys. Calvin Keys is going to be coming to the show. I mean, coming. Hey. He's going to be doing his own show there. I think it's in April. Yeah, I think it's in oh, April. Oh, that's beautiful. So, I mean, and I'm really excited, man. I love this music. Sometimes I can't express it. But, well, mm -hmm. actually, I take that back. If I'm doing an air show, doing a show, I can express it really well. I used to tell Cass, I said, hey, you put it on wax. I'm a player, you know. So uh, we're looking forward, really looking forward to the show on the 23rd. And I once again, in advance, I thank you so much for coming and performing at our club. Well, it's actually called, it's actually a lounge. And for everyone who wants more information about that, go to peacocklounge.org You can get tickets in advance or pay at the door. Uh, We've got the great Howard Riley that's going to be coming in with his quartet. And he already told you, he said, I think I'm going to swing a little bit more this time because I've seen you on both sides of the spectrum. I've seen you when you have, well, you have fun both ways. But when you're doing the funk thing and, and blending it in, it's just like, okay, bro, I got you. <laughs> I got you. So um, I love, I'm, I, I'm just excited, man. I'm just really excited. Looking forward to it, man. It's going to be your birthday, so we got to party like it's 2023. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. um, but that's it, man. I just wanted to touch base with you, talk to you briefly. We're going to sit down right and on. really have, we're going to really sit down and have an extensive conversation because oh, there's just you. so much more that I've read that I would love to talk about, but we really don't have the time. I want to focus on two things, but Howard, Thank you so much for your time. And My folks, uh, you're more than welcome. And uh, looking forward to you on the 23rd. My name Thank is James. You. Me too. My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, the podcast 
We've had the opportunity to talk to saxophonist Howard Riley, who will be performing at the Peacock Lounge, 552 Haight Street in San Francisco, California. It's on a Thursday, on his birthday, first hits at 8 o'clock. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, Howard.